after midnight. Sarah Jean Hosey is a natural born singer. She grew up in a musical family. She did not grow up twanging, fiddling, and singing hurtin' songs, but the fact she is an actor allows her to turn herself into a singing cowgirl and channel country music icon Patsy Cline on and off the stage. Sarah Jean is a vocal trickster with a new album called In Case You Didn't Know. It is my pleasure to welcome Sarah Jean Hosey to Studio 4 to tell us more. I assumed that you uh, that you grew up not twanging and playing fiddle, but maybe you did. I did not grow up twanging and playing fiddle. I wish I had though, just so mm. I could say that. No, um, I did grow up, as you said, in a very musical family. We we sang, we literally sang for our supper and sang around the kitchen table. But um, yodeling was interesting because my my grandfather yodeled. Really. And so I grew up listening to him and thinking. How does he do that? And little did I know I'd actually get to use the skill later in life. Uh, did he teach you to yodel, he didn't, Grandpa? But he, Grandpa used to sit around all the time and and hodl and yodel, and I think, oh, that's so cool. And mm -hmm. so mine too, but I never learned how. <laughs> I tried and tried as a kid, like you try to do that whistle. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Couldn't do that. Couldn't yodel. Well, I can't whistle, but I can yodel. So together we could be oh, a team. Oh, great. We could. <laughs> yeah, I can do the whistle, get the cab. You can exactly. yodel. Mm -hmm. When did you start singing and acting? I started singing, um, I started training as a singer when I was very young. About eight or nine is when I started to take vocal lessons. And my father was a singer, and I yes. grew up listening to him. Bill. Bill. Bill yes. Hosey. Bill Hosey. And Sylvia, your mom. Yes, who is also a singer, but singer. was primarily a, a dancer director. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I started training and I never stopped. I love singing. So. And don't you have an Aunt Dorothy? I do, and Somewhere she sings in there? as well. She sings too? Um, they all sing. They all sing. <laughs> well, I just fall to pieces thinking about that. Mm -hmm. How did you study uh, Patsy Cline? Where did you start? Well, the first time I saw Patsy Cline, anything about Patsy Cline was actually this show, was Dean Regan's show. Mm -hmm. When I was in Charlottetown, I was 11 years old, and the show was happening um, at the festival. And I was too young to get into the particular theater because they served drinks, but because m my parents um, had friends there, they let me go to the lighting booth and watch it, and I fell in love with um, Marlene mm -hmm. O'Brien, who played Patsy at the mm -hmm. time, and I started to listen to Patsy then. And so I've been listening to her for a long time. And then when Dean Regan about four years ago called me and said, do you want to play Patsy? I started to listen to her more, more intently and really mm -hmm. study all of her sound and, and the reasons why she made, she made such unique vocal choices. And had great writers. Like when Willie oh, Nelson yeah. writes a song for you. I know, I love mm -hmm. Willie Nelson's music. Tell me about her for people who have never heard of Patsy Cline. I can't imagine. Have, yeah, there are people though that having haven't. Having grown up on the farm, me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, who was she? Patsy Klein was a girl that grew up in Winchester, Virginia. And um, her mother actually gave birth to her very young. And she won a talent contest when she was 14, I think, on the Arthur, Arthur Godfrey talent yes. show. And um, with Walking After Midnight. And from then on, she hit it big all through the 60s. Um, yeah, she she died at the age of 30 in a in a plane crash. But so many great artists yes. in the 60s died. I remember. So young. Were you alive? Yes, you were alive. When she died? No, no, you I weren't wasn't. alive. No, you weren't. Well, I was. I remember <laughs> that sad day. Uh, yeah. But uh, she had a turbulent life. She did. Yeah, her and father. Immense talent. Immense talent, Tur turbulent life. Her, their, her father left them when she was 15, 14 mm -hmm. or 15, and her mother and her just became inseparable, very, very good friends. And um, But like so many artists, I think she turned it all around, and she was wild. I think she was a little mm -hmm. wild. She I went through a few husbands. and few husbands, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, gone too soon too young, uh, mm -hmm. but she made 30 instead of 27 because now they have the Amy Winehouse 27 Club. I know, it's true. <laughs> the Jim Morrison and the Janis Joplin, something about 27. I know. Ooh, no. Too young. Too young. So uh, what's the magic of this show? I think the magic of this show, um, there's two things. One, I think it's a trip down memory lane for a lot of people. I mean, I love looking out in the audience and seeing a couple who have 
you know, I ask a couple every night how long they've been together and, you know, it ranges from this is our first date to, you know, six, 55, 60 years. And for those people who have been together that long, a lot of these songs are their songs. Mm -hmm. sure. They always, and I see them holding hands and I think this is a trip down memory lane for them. I fall to pieces just a, a, a crazy... Always. Um, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's got you. So many great tunes. Only at my mother's funeral would we would we play Patsy Cline. She sang <laughs> crazy. Go figure. Well, that's the song she wanted. And that's the that's even most though she popular. was gone, we honored it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's not just you in this show. I hear tell. No, it's not just me. There's a DJ. There is a DJ named Kevin James, and he um, he tells the story of uh, Patsy's life, and also does some hilarious old uh, stand-up shtick. Mm -hmm. Which he does very well. It's just, um, just those great old jokes of, my wife is so fat, and the audience says, how fat is she? <laughs> those great jokes. So he's in the show, and I have a fabulous five-piece band that just rock out. No kidding. I mean, how many singers get to sing with such a mm. tight, awesome country band? I'm very, very mm -hmm. lucky. You are lucky. I'd yeah. like to do that, but I don't have your. Uh... <laughs> Talent. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin James, you know him better than uh, just on the stage. I do. Rumor has it. Yes, rumor has it I may be marrying him in October. <laughs> well, <laughs> how romantic. Is that fun or it what? It is. It's really mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. He's a, he's a wonderful guy. He keeps me laughing. Uh, back to the band, mm -hmm. uh, in case you didn't know. Yes. Is the band you're with in the Patsy Cline show on this? They are. It, minus one guitar player. Uh, I only needed one guitar player for the CD, but yes, it's the same band, and mm. they play on my new album, which was fabulous. They pushed me when we were doing Patsy over on the island. They said, you got to get your album out, and so they pushed me to, to get it recorded, <laughs> and I'm really glad they did. I am, too. Mm -hmm. I was listening to it uh, last night, uh, driving in my car. I listened to it <laughs> this morning on the way to work, and I love the song about... Uh, you're hot, you play Scrabble. Yes. <laughs> Let's play life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You write these songs? Yes, I do. I wrote every song but one on the album. You did because there's some sad in there. There's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm so over you. Well, you know, everybody's got those that. heartbreaks in their life mm -hmm. that they need to uh, get through by writing music, which is what I did. And it's lovely to, to put them down and, and have them now. You know, I didn't realize how important that was to yeah. then have... It really, there is a lot of my life in that, in that album. I it's wondered. a very personal album. Yeah. It's, it's, it seemed personal to me, and I don't mm -hmm. know you. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. But it seemed personal, uh, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. I'm over you. Yes. What about Wolverine? Wolverine is the fact that I, for those people that know me quite well, I am a Hugh Jackman fan. Yeah. I started as a Wolverine who fan. Who isn't? Uh, who isn't? <laughs> Dreamy. Mm -hmm. And um, when I found out he was playing Wolverine, it was like, oh my gosh, my favorite comic book character and my favorite actor this is couldn't be better so a song came out of it every girl needs a superhero to take care yes. of yes you know? do you write the lyric first the melody first how what's the process um, for you usually it's lyric first but mm. um, every so often a, a melody will come to mind and then I'll just sort of sit on it and let mm -hmm. let the words come mm -hmm. what about walk a mile walk a mile is actually a song that I wrote for a musical that I've written and so I wanted to have one song from the musical I'd written on the CD for uh, for promotional purposes mm -hmm. mainly. And uh, uh, Converse shoes. Converse shoes. <laughs> all about um, all about waiting and wondering if somebody will take a chance and risk being in love again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you did. I did. <laughs> yes, Apparently, I did. it's working out. <laughs> it's working out. Mm -hmm. uh, back to your uh, other stage work, mm -hmm. Les Mis. Mm -hmm. You Spelling played Fantine? B Fontaine, yes. Fontaine. Mm. One of Victor Hugo. Oh. oh my. One of the best roles to ever be mm. to be given the opportunity to play. That the music in that show. I mean, I really think it's a lot of people's favorite I do. all time musical. I do and too. why shouldn't it be? <laughs> I don't know. I've seen it I don't know how many times. It's ridiculous. Every mm -hmm. time they say Limiz is coming time, I go, okay, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And now it's making a huge comeback. They're gonna be doing mm -hmm. a, a tour of it again, so it's not not our production, but right, yeah. someone else's. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, Patsy Klein is at the Arts Club, Grand yes. Island. Bill Millard. Yes, that great man. What a character he is. I've traveled with him. He's fantastic, Uncle Bill. He, I, I am so grateful to him. He has given me so many opportunities mm -hmm. and so many great roles. And and he does. He really takes a lot of people yeah. under his wing, and he's so loyal and 
and he's a great man. He really cares about our community, our theater community. He does a lot of work. Yes, for he us. does. Sits on the board of the National Theater School, or did. Mm -hmm. uh, very supportive of actors and uh, their ilk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, back to, uh, didn't you, weren't you in the Spelling Bee, didn't you do a co-pro with the Belfry <laughs> yes. Theater yeah, in Fanning Victoria? Open. Yes. What was that play about? It was about a Spelling Bee. It was literally a musical written about a Spelling Bee and uh, about these kids that come to the Spelling Bee and you learn about their lives and how they how they grew up and, and how spelling is such a huge part of their life. And mm -hmm. it was such a funny musical. I loved playing it. I, I was a old champion. I was a grown-up oh. who won the spelling bee when I was a kid, and so now I was running the spelling bee. Really? So you yeah. could spell inebriated? Yes, I could, <laughs> I if could. it were in front of me on a piece of paper. Mm. Well, uh, do they have spelling bees still? They do. They do? Yeah. Yeah, they do. And there's a wonderful documentary called Spellbound, which we did mm. a lot of research for our show okay. watching that. Um, all about spelling bees. It's quite huge, actually. Yeah, I know. I, I was in many spelling bees because for some reason I could spell. My mother said it's because I took phonics. But who knows? Because it has nothing to do with intelligence. <laughs> well, apparently, it does. whether or not you can spell. Don't cut yourself down. I know. I think that you're very intelligent. Well, I don't know about that. But I do know that it, whether people can spell or not doesn't really have anything to do with your IQ. I think it's a mem for them, it's a memorization. They, Perhaps. They memorize. Mm -hmm. So many words. And the order, I mean, I don't know, the English language is tough, I find. For sure. But at least we can speak that. Yeah, at least we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a woman of many languages? No, I'm a woman of one. One in the, in the bilingual country, but that'll get better. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have a play or a playwright, um, a mammoth, a David Mammoth, or somebody, uh, some play you long to do, you would like to do? Mm, there's so a many. A musical? I'm a... I am a big um, Sondheim fan. Mm. I would absolutely love to do Sunday in the Park with George, wow. which is one that you know doesn't get done yeah. very often. So many Sondheims don't get done very often mm -hmm. by regional theater because Sondheim is a tough sell. Sure. You don't go away humming his music, but his lyrics and his messages are, mm -hmm. are so powerful. Side by side by Sondheim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about Jacques Brel? You did Jacques Brel. I did Brel. Jacques Brel. Alive and Well and Living in Paris? Yes. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. and the, the great writing, too. And those great writing, and amazing. I saw it the first time at the uh, Arts Club. It was Leon Bibb and Ruthie Nichols and Anne Mortify and Jane Mortify. Mo the Jane legend, in that? Jane Mortify, yeah. Didn't Jane do um, Patsy Cline? Jane did Patsy Cline. Patsy, Jane I think and I that share a few roles, actually. She um, played Sally Bowles for the Arts Club mm -hmm. um, the last time. I did it the last time, and she did it the time before. So we share many a uh, many role, Jane and I. I often yeah. say to her, you should just send me a resume and I'll try to, try to catch sure. up. <laughs> well, we're friends. She can sing better than I can, too. She's fantastic. I can crack the glass if I sing, pretty much. She's, a, she's so supportive of me. She's, she comes mm. to my opening nights and she always sends me a letter of encouragement. And she's How still, fabulous. She's a wonderful woman. Yeah. How fabulous. She certainly is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so in case you didn't know, is there another one coming along, another album? Is that hopefully, a desire? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'd love to do another one. Yeah. On your list? It's on my uh, list. Like to be a pop star, like to be a musical star, a Broadway star, a what? All a of mother. The, all, of, all of the above. <laughs> a gardener. Yes. I stay open. I just sort of mm -hmm. go where the wind takes me, and usually it takes me somewhere musically. So. Well, that makes sense with your roots and, and your DNA, mm -hmm. because your your parents' uh, stellar talents, and I don't know Aunt Dorothy. She's hilarious. I, she was I've a great seen Aunt comedian. Dorothy, really. Well, she played the last thing she did was she played the wardrobe in Beauty and the Beast, the oh. Stanley for, I guess for four or five years. Okay, so maybe I have seen yeah, her. She's just hilarious. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we haven't had coffee. You need to. She'd keep you laughing. Apparently, we do. Uh, how lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. And as you know, uh, Patsy Cline is one of my favorites. Don't tell anyone. Okay, I won't. <laughs> you know, you, you bring that up. It's sort of like John Denver. They go, you. <laughs> Listen to John Denver too, and I say, "Yep, <laughs> absolutely." <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see, see you. See you too. on stage. Uh, the run is until when? August thirteenth. August thirteenth. Great. Down on Granville Island. Granville Island. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Jean Hosey, uh, new album. In case you didn't know.